Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a beer, it's time for some Path of Excel discussion. The 3.14 release is just around the corner. Uh, at the time I'm recording this video, it's about 32 hours away. And one of the most intriguing skills that's being added in the Ultimatum League is the Reap skill. Reap scales damage in a way that we haven't really seen before. It conjures a magical scythe that swipes across the that swipes in front of you. Uh, although this looks like it's a weapon attack, it is not. It sort of feels like you're swinging swinging your weapon in front of you, but this is a purely magical effect. In that sense, it's more like a skill like Ethereal Knives, if you've ever played with that. However, uh, where Reap deals an initial amount of damage with that hit, it also inflicts a debuff on the monsters that you hit. And that debuff causes them to take uh, causes them to take additional damage over time. This damage over time is physical damage, and one of the things that you can do that there's starting to be a bit of support for in the Ultimatum expansion is uh, ways in which you can simultaneously scale both this hit damage, this physical hit, and also this damage over time effect. There's a couple of new support gems that are added to support this playstyle, and I think it's an interesting way to try and build a character. Now, in terms of ascendancy choice, I thought long and hard about this. Uh, a lot of people are excited at the prospect of running a chieftain, ignoring the damage over time, and just scaling the physical hit with fire damage. That is probably a very solid build. It's not the way I've chosen to go. I've chosen to scale both the physical damage hit and the damage over time through the enormous amount of increased generic damage that the Elementalist Ascendancy gets. So the Elementalist is a class that a lot of people think of as being a minion-based class. And whilst that can be the way that you play the Elementalist, you can summon combat minions in the form of, of Elementals and have them kill enemies for you, this is very much a build that summons golems as buff bots. So these golems sit around, they provide powerful buffs to your character, uh, and when they die, they get resummoned automatically by one of the golem ascendancy, uh, sorry, one of the uh, golem nodes, Liege of the Primordial. We're going to be stacking quite a lot of golems in this build. Uh, and so what we're going to do is take Liege of the Primordial and Elemancer first in the Elementalist Ascendancy. Liege of the Primordial provides us with increased damage per summon golem, uh, and this is generic damage, so it will apply both to, Re uh, to Reap's hit and to Reap's damage over time. It provides 25% increase to the effective buffs granted by your golem per summon golem. So when you've got two golems, that's going to be 50% increase effect of the buffs. When you've got eight or nine golems, this is 200 to 225% increased effective buffs. That's kind of a lot. Also, when your golems die, they resummon themselves four seconds later, and you get plus one to the maximum number of golems. This is an absolute automatic take. It's uh, one of the reasons that we're an Elementalist. The second reason we're an Elementalist is Elemancer. Uh, this grants your golems immunity to elemental damage, which means that they will stay alive longer and provide their buffs more reliably. But then there's the big things. Firstly, there's an extra golem. Uh, secondly, another 25% increased effective buffs granted by your golems per summon golem. This, uh, this stacks with Liege of the Primordial. So with six golems, there's a total of 300% increased buffs. With eight, it's 400%. With nine, it's 450%. Kind of massive amount. And also, you become basically immune to elemental ailments. Elemental ailments can be quite dangerous in Path of Exile. Chill and Freeze can cause you to uh, cause you to fail to dodge a deadly attack. Uh, Ignite can burn you, and Shock can cause an attack that you would have otherwise laughed off to kill you. Complete immunity to all three of those uh, while you have three or more golems up, and even if you're down to two golems, you've got a, you've got a very good chance of avoiding elemental ailments. So for that reason, uh, there's a lot in the Elementalist Ascendancy for pretty much any build that's trying to deal damage. The rest of the uh, Ascendancy offers slimmer pickings. So we've got two outstanding nodes that do carry the Ascendancy choice, uh, but then from there, there's three more that I want to point out to you as options to choose between, and I'm not going to tell you which, one to pick, which two to pick. That's going to be your choice. You can take Shaper of Storms, which will allow all of your hits with Reap to inflict shock. The damage over time can't inflict shock, uh, but that's fine. The shock will scale up the damage over time that enemies suffer. You can take Shaper of Winter, which will cause your hits to inflict chill uh, from the Reap, which will slow down enemies. Or you can take Bastion of Elements, which is a moderately powerful defensive notable. Uh, please note that in 3.14, Bastion of Elements is getting nerfed slightly, uh, but it will still be pretty strong at keeping you alive if you take one big hit, and that one big hit is from an elemental damage source. 
So pick whichever two of those you want, uh, and that finishes off the elementalist part of the tree. So with that in mind, let's have a quick look at the numbers on Reap. Reap is a physical spell. Uh, that's going to be important when we talk about gearing. Uh, it, at level 20, at gem level 20, it costs 46 life. Note that this is a life cost, not a mana cost. And that's one of the reasons that we're in the Elementalist is because the tremendous amount of regeneration provided by a stone golem can help offset that massive amount of life we're going to be spending every second. Uh, we're then going to be dealing 1463.1 base physical damage per second. That's not a lot, but we can scale it up quite a lot. Uh, and it is a pretty high amount of base damage per second for a damage over time effect. The base duration is only one second. So what that means is that when you do your initial swipe with Reap, uh, if, you weren't, if you weren't supporting it in any way and you had no damage coming from your character, the monster would instantly take 700 to 1053 damage, and then over the next one second, it would take 1463 additional damage. Uh, however, you can scale up duration quite a bit in Path of Exile, uh, and we're going to be doing a modest level of investment into duration scaling, and we're going to get that up to 1.61 seconds. And that's essentially a 61% more multiplier to the amount of damage that we're, able, that we're able to do over time. Next is probably the single most important line that makes this skill work. Modifiers to spell damage apply to this skill's damage over time effect. So this is sort of already the case for all of the damage we're getting from the Elementalist Ascendancy, uh, like the increased damage per summon golem or the massively amped up effects of Flame Golem. Uh, that already applies to both the damage of the, sp of the hit and the damage over time. But it's all the multipliers to spell damage that make the difference, and those multipliers don't usually apply to damage over time effect. Uh, here they do because the skill says that they do. 10% increased area of effect, I think that just comes from it being 20 quality. Now you have the blood charge mechanic. Uh, essentially with Reap, if you hit an enemy and don't kill them, then you'll start storing up blood charges. These blood charges will cause Reap to do more damage. Uh, they'll cause it also to cost you more life. So Reap will become uh, both more damaging to the enemy and also more damaging to you at the same time. Again, we've got a massive amount of regeneration from our stone golem, something like 900 a second, uh, and so we should be fine with this. However, this means that we're going to be inflicting a lot of extra damage on enemies with this. So that's one of the things that we're going to be trying to scale up with, with Reap, is uh, when we're doing single target damage, we want to get five blood charges scaled, uh, stacked up as quickly as we can, uh, and then once we've got those five blood charges, we can do the most damage that we ca possibly can. So, uh, let's jump across into the program Path of Building. Now, I'm recording this before 3.14 goes live, uh, and that means that there's a lot of stuff that's just not finished in the, pa in the program Path of Building yet. Uh, the implementation of Reap is not complete uh, and may well have bugs. Additionally, two of the support gems I want to use are not implemented, and we only have stats for level 20 Reap, so I can't give you information on what it's going to look like at gem level 26 which is going to, be the, uh, going to be the next goal for a character that is playing this build. With all of that out of the way, uh, for a four link, I'm pretty impressed with dealing 455,000 damage over time DPS just from Reap and additional damage from Corrupting Fever, which is a skill we'll get to later. The core of the passive tree uh, centers around two things. Firstly, we are a cluster jewel based tree. Uh, this is probably the most cluster jewels that most people have, have used on a build. And the reason for that is that there's damage over time multiplier and physical damage over time multiplier are just stats that are hard to get on the core passive tree, but they're all over cluster jewels. So we're going to be taking a lot of cluster jewels and spending most of our points out in these outer regions. I have filled in very, very, very bad cluster jewels here. So this is called mediocre large cluster for a reason. It is basically just a magic cluster jewel with one specific mod, Primordial Bond, on it. Uh, Primordial Bond is not all that hard to roll. Then we have these mediocre medium clusters, which have only one mod on them again, Brush With Death. The small clusters I'm using are a bit better, uh, but I do think that something like this is achievable. And ultimately, I'm forced to use these small clusters because I am very short on life on the build. Uh, and I will say that this build looks like, at least at the moment, it's pretty squishy. Uh, there's a lot more space to get life on gear than we've got at the moment. You know, this is with a tabula rasa. We'll see, uh, with a tabula rasa, and I think with um, 
no life on the amulet, uh, no life on the helmet at the moment. So there's a lot of things that you can do to improve that. But I don't think you're going to be getting 6,000 life on this character, nor will you have other really powerful defensive mechanics, uh, except for a lot of physical damage reduction, which we'll get to later when we talk about the golems. So in terms of the key things on the passive trait, the most important thing is probably golem commander. Uh, this is just more of all of the things that make element, uh, elementalist good with plus one to the maximum number of summoned golems. We would take this no matter where it was on the passive tree. However, conveniently, it's quite close to where we want to be. Uh, we also take the skill duration cluster, potency of will. Uh, this grants us 45% increased skill effect duration. Uh, this is again something we would take pretty much wherever it was on the passive tree. Uh, it's going to add a lot to the damage output of the build. Otherwise, we're just taking high quality stuff whilst staying close to our major clusters and we're taking Spiritual Aid. Spiritual Aid is an interesting one. I played around with a few things in this spot, uh, and then ultimately I realized that by far the best large cluster jewel node that I could roll was Primordial Bond. Unfortunately, Primordial Bond is only available on large cluster jewels that have minions grant 10% uh, increased damage. And I don't really want, I'm not a minion build, even though I am using minions, uh, they're there to buff me, they're not there to do damage. Then I remembered Spiritual Aid exists, and Spiritual Aid causes all those increases and reductions to minion damage to also affect you. Uh, and what this means is that taking all of these nodes that you're kind of forced to take as travel nodes uh, ends up providing quite a lot more damage to your character. And that actually ends up working out better than using a physical damage cluster jewel here. Additionally, Primordial Bond is really easy to roll. Uh, it grants 40% increased effective buffs granted by your golems. It grants 10% increased damage per summon golem. And we have two of these. So with six golems up, that's 120% increased damage. Uh, with eight golems up, it's 160. And with nine golems, it's 180. This is a lot of extra damage. We want to take it. And so with that in mind, uh, those are the large cluster jewels. They're the minion ones, and that's the justification for for spending five points picking up Spiritual Aid. Once we've done that, uh, it's just a matter of going for Cluster Jewels, taking all six node uh, nodes, which is an unusual decision, but I think it's the right one because damage over time multiplier is just so good. Uh, and then we're going to be using small Cluster Jewels just to provide some durability because uh, there's just not that many life nodes that we're not taking that are really good. Uh, and I think these Cluster Jewels outclass taking options like, say, Quick Recovery instead. Okay, so that's the core of the passive tree. Uh, let's talk about soc uh, skill link, shall we? Uh, firstly, for reap. Uh, you'll notice here that I've only got reap linked to brutality, efficacy, and controlled destruction. The reason for that is there are two more planned skill gems. The first one is cruelty. Cruelty support is one that I will show you quickly what it does uh, over in the... Let's see, jump across into uh, the browser client here. Uh, cruelty support causes your hits to deal 29% more damage with hits. And then there's this cryptic additional text. Cruelty has a base duration of four seconds. Hits from supported skill or skills grant cruelty. What cruelty is, it is a buff that causes enemies to suffer increased, oh sorry, to suffer more damage over time. The amount that it, ta that it is, is similar to the intensity of a shock that the hit would have inflicted on the enemy. So if you hit an enemy for about 1% of its life, uh, you will inflict, a, you'll cause them to take something like 20% more damage from damage over time for a few seconds. Uh, if you hit them for more like uh, for more like 5% of their life, you're starting to get towards 30, 32% more damage. And if you hit them for 50% of their life or more, then you'll deal 50% more damage with uh, damage over time effects uh, until that enemy dies or until cruelty expires, whichever's first. Cruelty seems to be one of the better support gem options. The last support gem is going to be one of two things. It's either going to be life tap support, which has the drawback of doubling the amount of uh, life that you're spending, uh, but it does offer 29% more damage while you have life tap, which you'll have all the time, uh, except for the very first reap that you cast on an en enemy, which is fine. 
Uh, so life tap is an option. The other option is a level four empower. And I'm just going to say for the moment, I don't know which of these is the correct choice. Uh, we're just going to have to figure that out through playing around with both of them. But early on in the league, of course, empower level four is either not available or prohibitively expensive. And so to start with, let's start with life tap as soon as you get a six link. Uh, life tap though is the weakest of the is the weakest of the gems there. So if you can't get it, you can't get it. If you've got a five link, just use a five link. So reap linked to brutality, linked to efficacy, linked to control destruction linked to cruelty and linked to whatever you put in the last slot. The final option I want to mention is Swift Affliction as, a, as something you could consider. Swift Affliction uh, inc it does more damage over time at the expense of reducing the skill duration. Despite the name, Swift Affliction is not linked to Afflictions. Uh, I actually thought it was uh, until someone corrected me when I was brainstorming this build. Uh, Swift Affliction can multiply any damage over time, uh, not just from not just from um, not just from Afflictions. So that's an option that you can use. Uh, the next thing we're going to use is a helmet that has plus two to the level of socketed minion gems. And we're going to stick a Flame Golem, Chaos Golem, Ice Golem, and Stone Golem in it. Uh, the idea here is that we want to get all these golems out and just keep them keep them going all the time. They're going to give us considerable buffs. So Stone Golem is going to give us a tremendous amount of life recovery. Stone Golem is going to cause us to regenerate 116 base life per second. However, that's going to get multiplied by all sorts of uh, all sorts of sources of increased buff effect, and it's actually going to wind up being something like. Uh, it is, it adds uh, 880 something uh, life regeneration per second. It's absolutely massive. Ice Golem grants us a small amount of critical strike chance, which then becomes a large amount of critical strike chance. We're not scaling critical strikes on this build, uh, but it's still a little bit of a bonus because sometimes you're going to just get an extra big hit because of a crit, and that extra big hit is going to inflict a bigger shock and a bigger cruelty debuff. We're using a Flame Golem, which adds damage and does so much damage for us. Uh, so much, in fact, that we go from... Uh, the, it adds something like... Uh, I think it's, it's adding something like 60,000 DPS uh, and also adds to the hit the hit component of uh, Reap as well. So that's a big, a big buff. And then we've got Summon Chaos Golem, which provides us with physical damage reduction. Physical damage reduction is a really powerful defensive layer and we have 44% with Chaos Golem active, we have 6% without it. So essentially, this Summon Chaos Golem is giving us the benefit, the defensive benefits of 9.5 Endurance Charges. That's nothing to laugh at. So, uh, that's the Golem setup. We're also going to use a Summon Lightning Golem as well. Uh, I just didn't put that one in the helmet, I stuck it in the boots because it's where I had space. We're going to be using Malevolence and reserving half of our mana on it. Malevolence does two things for us. Firstly, 20% more damage over time. This is just a damage multiplier. But secondly, 19% increased skill effect duration. I did consider Pride as an alternative here, uh, and I certainly wouldn't fault someone that chose to run Pride as, instead of Malevolence. Uh, but I think that Malevolence comes out on top because of the skill effect duration. But by all means, try both. Prove me wrong. Decoy Totem is just such a powerful piece of uh, such a powerful piece of um, utility that I really like it. Uh, lots of people don't. Make up your own mind. For movement skill, we're going to use Flame Dash, Link to Second Wind, and Link to Arcane Surge. Arcane Surge we're going to keep at level six, uh, and that's going to cause it to always proc when we use Flame Dash. Uh, Arcane Surge provides a multiplier to spell damage, uh, thirteen percent more damage, and that 13% more damage also scales up Reap's damage over time as well. So it's a pretty powerful overall combination there. Lastly, we are using Flesh and Stone linked to Mame. Uh, Flesh and Stone is being nerfed. At the, the version of Path of Building that I'm using is out of date. It still has the old mana reservation of 25%. It's going up to 35%. That said, uh, this just adds so much, so, so, so much uh, additional damage. We're going to be in Blood Stance all the time. Blood Stance causes all nearby enemies to be maimed and also causes enemies maimed by this skill to take 16% increased physical damage. But then, maim support causes them to take 14% increased physical damage as well. The combination is that all enemies that are maimed by Flesh and Stone are going to take 30% increased damage. 
That's the equivalent of a 30% effectiveness shock on the enemy. Uh, so that's a lot of damage and it's something that we definitely want to take advantage of. Lastly, there's a couple of things that I can't demonstrate here because they don't exist in Path of Building yet. So, uh, the first one that I want to mention is that we're going to experiment with the skill Corrupting Fever. Uh, Corrupting Fever is a new skill that's being added, and I'll just quickly jump across to sh show you what it does in the Path of Exile website. Uh, might help if I just close Path of Building and bring up the bring up the uh, website. And Corrupting Fever is an interesting one. Corrupting Fever causes enemies to, so it deals 335.4 base physical damage per second. That sounds pretty low. You know, we're talking uh, Reap is dealing 1463 and then has the blood charge mechanic on top. But what Corrupting Fever can do is stack 10 times. And this is the main reason that we are choosing to scale a little bit more in the way of uh, increased duration on the character. So, uh, we have 335.4 base physical damage per second, stacking up to 10 times, and Corrupting Fever costs 520 life baseline. With all of the things that we've got attached to it, it's going to cost something like 1,200 life when we cast it. However, we only need to cast it once per map. As long as, before the base duration expires, we spend 205 life on other spells, other spells including things like Casting Reap, uh, Corrupting Fever will refresh itself without draining additional life. So, while it's active, uh, this skill is going, uh, every time that we hit an enemy, uh, it's going to apply a debuff on them called Corrupting Blood, and this will stack up to 10 times. Each stack will deal that enemy 335.4 physical damage per second. We are going to scale Corrupting Fever a little bit by linking it to Brutality Support, Efficacy Support, and Increased Duration Support in Gloves. Additionally, at a higher budget, uh, you can also use Essence Crafted Gloves, uh, and those Essence Crafted Gloves would have, the, uh, would have the Delirium Essence mod on them, which causes Socketed, dot, uh, socketed uh, Damage Over Time skills to deal 30% more damage. So that's something that I'm thinking uh, will be worthwhile doing there. Okay, so we're going to have to get resists on gear, and I haven't put those into this path of building. I will make this path of building available, but do be aware that it is a it is an incomplete work because we cannot finish it, uh, and what's written in the description of the video below is going to be authoritative. And I will also provide some updates as to how this is going. Uh, in terms of other gearing options, for weapons, I have currently set up some pretty bad ones in path of building. So let me just jump back to path of building and demonstrate that. Uh, you'll see that we are using what I have named low-end, no spell levels, Opal Wand. Uh, this just has some spell damage, some damage over time multiplier. It's not terrible, but it's not a good wand. What we want to use is a unique dagger called Cold Iron Point. Uh, Cold Iron Point grants plus three to the level of all physical spell skill gems. Uh, that will both increase the level of our... It'll increase Corrupting Fever, it'll increase Reap, and it'll also increase our Stone Golem, which will cause us to replenish more life. However, we're not using those Cold Iron Points at the moment. Uh, they're just something that we've got <clears throat> ready to use when we know the stats on Reap at gem level 26. Uh, Cold Iron Point can be a little bit pricey on the first day of a league, but it is something that tends to fall in price pretty quickly. We have a very basic uh, basic helmet here. Uh, all it's got is the mod plus two to the level of socketed minion gems. Uh, we have a tabula rasa. Uh, we have some stat-based gloves. They've just got some life and some stats on them. Uh, we've got some pretty basic boots. You'll notice I'm not fixing resists here. The resists are completely crangled. Uh, we have a unique amulet called the Primordial Chain. This gives us three more golems and makes our golems less effective as combat minions. Uh, it also makes the golems a little bit easier to kill. Being easy to kill is a big drawback, but I still think that the Primordial Chain is worth it. At a very high budget, you would want to replace this with a unique amulet called All's Uprising, uh, and specifically with the Pride version of that. Or you could use the Malevolence one, uh, and uh, yeah, Malevolence or Pride, either or. We just got some terrible rings. Although this ring is terrible, this ring, however, uh, is important because it's got a Delve exclusive mod on it. 0.2% of physical damage leached as life. That's something that you might not be able to get early in the league, uh, even as bad as this one. Uh, but it's something to keep in mind uh, that that's a useful stat to get. Belt-wise, 
uh, nothing on the belt, no damage, nothing like that. Uh, flasks, which fire brew is the big deal? The rest of them, you're going to need a life flask. You're not going to need a mana flask. Uh, you want the life flask to be an instant life flask. And then you've got three slots to use on whatever utility you want. Which fire brew is really solid. Uh, and also provides a number of extra options for scaling damage. And you'll see that it roughly adds 20% more dam uh, dot damage, uh, which is pretty meaningful when it's, when it's active. Uh, in terms of your other flasks, though, I would suggest, and like I say, make your own decisions here. You probably want to have a quick silver flask of adrenaline uh, so that you can move faster. You might want to have a silver flask to grant onslaught. You might want to have a uh, basalt flask to provide additional physic physical damage resistance. Uh, and there's lots of other options, so I'll let you fill those in yourself. Uh, in terms of unique jewels, you're going to want to pick up an Arnima Stone when you can. This is not going to be affordable early on. Uh, this, this jewel comes from a vendor recipe from vendoring the three different Primordial Jewels. So there is Primordial Might, Primordial Harmony, and Primordial Eminence. Of these jewels, the only one we want to use is Primordial Eminence, and we're using two of them. Then we're using the Arnima Stone, which grants one additional maximum golem, and an additional one if you have three items with the Primordial Tag socketed to you. Uh, here we're using two Primordial Eminences to get two Primordial Tags and the Primordial Chain. So, uh, that's the sort of outline of what I would recommend. Early in the league, uh, your primary priority is going to be picking up the large and medium cluster jewels uh, that you're going to need, and rolling better ones than I've rolled here. You know, these are terrible. Uh, these ones are intentionally terrible. Uh, that's the way I've set them up, so that there's something that can be easily replaced. And I've just, uh, I've just done something that's ruined that there, so we will have to fix that up after I'm finished here. I've just removed a large cluster jewel from the build. Okay. Anyways, uh, that is the build as it stands at the moment. Uh, obviously, no plan survives first contact with the enemy. Uh, it's entirely possible that this build needs to be changed quite a bit. And I will update with my experiences running this build. Uh, and if you've got any comments or questions, definitely fire away below. Otherwise, it's always exciting to league start with a new build. And that's what I'm looking forward to doing in one day and seven hours time. See you then.